Hello and welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles Breakdowns. First things first, yes, I am sick, but I am going to try my best to get through these breakdowns just because I enjoy doing them and I also don't really want to have a backlog growing. We're going to see how it goes, so I apologise, I probably sound a wee bit weird because a few people have noticed it. Sorry guys, we are going to be doing tests and stuff, so hopefully I'm okay. Fingers crossed guys, I also have many many different things like allergies going on and asthma going on, so fun times and it's a, like attack on my throat right now very excited to break down 86 as i had to ch shuffle my release schedule around a little bit so if you weren't expecting it there has been a few changes welcome to clockwork dandy noodles a channel where i generally break down anime i break down anything airing i go into how fun visuals can tell you stories and stuff this is a anime i definitely look forward to breaking down because there's two sides of a coin being shown at the same time the storytelling is done via environment, which is very, very nice. So before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Feel pity upon me as I struggle through with my voice sounding like awful. I sound awful. I could probably play a villain right now. Just be like, I am your father. Make sure you are subscribed because there is a lot of videos going out right now. So lots of stuff going through your way. And if you are just discovering me for the first time, hello, welcome. Welcome to the noodle bowl, as I like to call it. There is a Discord channel too if you want to join. Let's go straight to it because the way this anime is done is very, very clever. Very, very visual as well. Because we get a cold open and the cold open literally is done in a way where the story doesn't give away too much at once. It starts to give you little nuggets, it coaxes you along and it's done in a very visual way. So we're opening on just some tracks. We see a red sunset. This is a symbol of danger. A sunset also shows us a close of a chapter. It goes straight into that battle charge. So it's probably the close on certain lives because battles are generally seen as you have two sides. You've got a winning side, a losing side. People will lose their lives. We are following a unit into a battle, into a charge. Done, we're introduced to the units of the world. The mechs dip and dive into the battlefield unpredictable the battle can be we don't know what's going on we don't know who who's fighting we don't know where we are what's going on people places anything it's just done in a way that is cold to us very cold open we open up on the first of our mcs but initially we have absolutely no words no nothing to describe what's going on who she is where we get a visual of some lilies and we see her saluting towards them which then tells you that perhaps somebody has passed away perhaps somebody from the battle we just saw has lost their lives white is often a color of purity innocence lilies are often used at funerals that's how i know that somebody is dead and with the over bright white visual we get the light is very bright we know that this is a poignant scene this is something that's very very important to her wordless storytelling we are now picking up visuals from the outer world perhaps we have this person's mum this person's motherly figure we can see her eating her breakfast looking down almost on the mc where we get the disc skipping and creating tension tension is built very very nicely in this opening episode and i really appreciate that because it's done very very well no words again as we now get welcomed into the world first look at the world that we're in and it looks modern it looks clean it looks organized all the people we see have the same traits they have white hair white eyes and we start to hear some information playing on an advertising board a board that gives us some more nuggets starting to trickle through we have apparently 85 districts because the sun shines on 85 of them it's very interesting considering the title is 86 the TV announcer also gives us information on the battle that has just played out. However, we are told there are no human casualties, which is very interesting to say there's no human casualties because normally if we were reporting on a battle, you'd just say casualties because as opposed to what? Which starts to give us the idea that there might be a little bit more going on. The people in these fights aren't quite considered human to this world. We are introduced to the Republic of San Magnolia, but it's a very, very cold intro. But the storytelling is really, really well. And it's all environmental. We're picking up all the details we need 
from what's going on around us. Nobody is physically having to tell us everything. It is a good case of show, don't tell. We are now formally introduced to our character as a major by some subordinates. The scene inside the military headquarters, it's very different from what we've seen outside. Everybody is celebrating, everybody is drinking, everybody is joyous. Different from that cold atmosphere we've had building, that tension we've had building. But you can still feel that something isn't quite right. It's all down to the way that our main character actually reacts. We can see her scowling at the announcement when she hears that there's no human casualties. We also see her kind of ignoring the comrades, her, people who are calling to her. We see her ignoring them. A slightly more formal but yet informal introduction to her where she is called Major Malaise. She is mocked by being called the doll loving princess. This is a nitpick at her age. As we are told a bit later on, she is indeed the youngest to inherit the position that she's in. So it's a possibility that these people who are older than her look down on somebody younger, putting them in a subordinate role. Older work colleagues with a younger manager, people tend to look down on that person or they look to them in not quite the best light. We are now introduced to another character named Annette. Annette gives us an informal introduction to our MC. This time we are introduced to Lena. And we are now introduced in a conversation form that Lena is angry and feels quite differently about the damaged drones. Is interrupted when she's starting to say the country's conscious. Perhaps she thinks that the country isn't taking things seriously. It hasn't got a conscious way. It feels bad about what's going on. Little, little bits of information. Tiny nuggets bit by bit, which is very, very cleverly done get to start to see a bit of a divide going on amongst our district so district one seems to be angry and doesn't really want to talk about 86 because 86 does exist but we're basically pretending it doesn't conflict of information because we were told earlier 85 districts two uses of the word 86 86 in the fact there might be 86 districts and 86 because these are the guys from that district we get a nice full introduction given around five minutes in, which is very, very clever. As you've seen, tiny bits of nuggets coming together to start giving you a picture, start giving you an image of the world that you are in. Find out that she is the youngest in her position. We're giving a bit of a bit of a lowdown and what she does, that she handles these drones. She is a handler. We're introduced to some naming conventions like Pleiades, which is a meteor shower or a star constellation. The story is just really, really cleverly done where not too much information is given away at once. We start to actually see what she's like and how she treats these apparent drones. They even say, you are kind to us in Human 86, which is fun because we actually see her plugging in. We get to see the tech of the world, how she does it. She physically plugs in a bit like in the Matrix, be able to hear them, be able to kind of communicate to everybody at once. But it is very interesting just to see her, how she communicates with, at this point, you, you only think of these guys as drones. But at the same time, you start to wonder, the voice on the other end doesn't quite sound what you'd imagine a drone to sound like. We get a nice past sequence and it is highlighted in a golden filter. Golden filter tells you that it's the past, it happened long ago. Things like amber, it's a stone from the past. So the colour amber often linked to things like the past where she has been offered a pretty much ace unit to handle and control and we can see that she is actually related to some of the higher up officers this man is an uncle on her dad's side and we're told that her dad is dead we also get introduced to a possible family tie from the woman earlier as margaret possibly a mother figure who simply wants to see lena married the naming conventions in this anime with these apparent drones i love it Fafnir is our link to the Norse gods, really liking it. We had those celestial links earlier, and now we've got the Undertaker for WWE. I mean, Black Butler, I mean, no. Let's just talk about how fun those naming conventions really are. We get a Dutch angle when our uncle is essentially giving us a bit of a lowdown. Starts to tell us about a cautionary tale, that the processor ends up destroying the handler. So perhaps it's AI, is, is this essential drone who is actually backfiring and leading all the handlers to overcommit suicide or transfer units and go elsewhere, which Lena passes as nothing more than a ghost story. I think the links as well with this anime to Vivi airing this season as well, quite nice, both of them handling in the future. So this anime is around 2148-ish, I think that's when we open. Vivi, her initial open was 
2156. Two links between the two airing animes. Loving absolutely both of them. If you haven't already, go check out which uh, released this season, which is VV Fluorite Eyes Song. Breakdown is available on the channel. I promise I sound beautiful on that one. I sound awful today. What Lena wants to do, which is interacting with these drones. I'm, I am trying to do the air quotes because obviously I've seen the whole anime and we know they're not drones. What she's trying to do is frowned upon. It's not what people actually tend to do in this world. They don't want to know about these people. They don't want to interact. So what she's doing is very different from the world view. But we're also told that she is similar to her dad. So perhaps her dad also was a bit more humane towards these 86. To the rest of the world, there were no humans in that battle. But as we're about to find out, there are. It's an interesting concept, the idea of a futuristic world where battles are fought from drones or battles are fought wirelessly away from the whole fight. So people are not there risking their lives. Well, in a sense, in this battle, they are. But at the same time, it's an interesting look at a not so too distant future because the idea of things becoming a lot more wireless, a lot more unmanned is becoming more and more realistic. We get to have a fun conversation between Annette and Lena, starting to build a relationship between the two. We start to see the two discussing the idea of this ghost story, which Annette tells us is the truth. She definitely knows about people having committed suicide. She's the lead on a development team. So we know there's multiple units or factions to this military program operation. Annette was denied the Undertaker. So they wanted the Undertaker bringing in Obviously, she thinks it's a drone, she wants to surface it or something, but she is denied. Something denies her them bringing him in. And then we hear the first use of the word pig, which is very, very interesting because we're going to see that playing out in our flip side. We are introduced to the system which they link towards the 86 called Pararade. We are also given little nuggets again that the enemy we're fighting is the Legion. This conversation is giving us more details about the real world, the fact that she gets excited over real eggs, real milk, the way that it is brought up, the way that it is spoken about, suggests that these are rare commodities, that food in, food in this world has moved beyond and gone something synthetic, or as she puts it, artificial. Annette's fun sense of humour as the two have a little light bantering moment, which is a nice break from all the heavy tension building, where we find out that her suitor has been cheating and she decides to let him know that she knows in style. But then we get the first of our proper transitions, our hardcore transitions, where we drop the cream puff on the floor, then drops us back into the present. Lena is back in control of the 86. We're back into a fight. But this fight goes horribly wrong very, very quickly as we start to see more and more of these drones are destroyed. And at this point, it is only just a name being blacked out with the word destroyed upon it. Nothing more. Still trying to keep up the idea that these are nothing more than drones. There's no nothing human about this. Lena then tries to apologise for the fallen units, where we start to have a very scary foreboding cautionary warning. Our warning comes from one of the units he's obviously in charge of. He says, say hello to the Reaper for me. So it isn't just a ghost story. So this drone is aware of the other drone. Again, I am air quoting. By this point, you can start to guess that the 86 are very much alive and not in the same sense as drones. You know that there is something going on, something bigger going on. We see some flowers and the flowers from before are simply for the fallen units because Lena feels bad. She treats them as people. She sees their passing as something to mourn. Where we start to get more build of tension. We get more build of tension as she starts to connect to the spearhead processor. And I like the way that this builds up a lot of tension. We get that beeping, that high pitched note which starts to put us uneasy. And we see the ink slowly leaking out onto the page. Really nice visual. And that cuts to a title card. And that ends our time in the first half of the coin. Let's flip the coin over. We get a cold open to a new side, a new district perhaps, and a new MC. And it's a very different contrast. Let's talk about contrast. So we get different colour palettes as well. The first colour palette, Lena's World, is a blue world. It's blues, it's whites. It's very cold, it's very detached, it's very futuristic and sterile. Whilst in this world, 
we're seeing things like yellows and reds, which are warm, but they also give that hint of danger. The world around us is completely different from Lena's very built up, modern, very nice looking world. But we're getting a more aged down world, which feels a bit more cosy, feels a bit more like this world has been lived in. It feels like it's got a story to tell. These buildings have a story to tell, but it immediately feels more fun, more happy. The people around are happy and jovious. They care for one another. They are joking. It is great. We see real eggs being shown. Again, contrasts. This is a world that still is attached to nature, still hasn't gone forward into artificial. Notice as well that everybody here has coloured hair. Everybody is different. They're not, they are unique. They have their own visual traits. Unlike the world that Lena is in, I keep saying world, I know it's district, just for now, they feel like worlds apart to me. And that is our hint that these indeed are our 86 as we start to see the lineup of X handlers and we are on our fifth handler. The fifth handler is no more, but we get to see the fact that these guys are making fun of it. They feel happy. It's a great thing. And it's a very interesting kind of grey area because we know that people are being driven to suicide or to end up removing themselves from the unit completely. Finally announced loud, calling them to dinner, we hear the fact that this is indeed the Spearhead members, aka our drones. Our drones look very much alive to me. The visual of that female statue, we saw it in Lena's world. This time we see it as graffiti in a more of a Banksy style. Really love the fact that it's similar to Banksy, it's graffiti, it's great. And it shows that figure squashing down a lowly 86, where he is carrying the label pig. They only see them as animals. It's a word we also heard quite a bit in the conversations from before. The 86 are basically not seen as people. They are likened to nothing more than animals whose lives do not matter. The 86 call the handlers white pigs. This is probably linked to the fact that their hair is white, their eyes are white. There is no fun colour in those. That also means that these guys have seen these guys. The 86 have seen the handlers. They're definitely at some point, they're not living in the fact that they can't see each other. They know that these guys look what they look like. So that definitely shows you that there's a bit of a crossover going on, but not too much of a crossover. And these guys are celebrating the removal of the last handler, where we are introduced to Shin, our new MC. And he is indeed the Reaper. The transition, the transition of the cat that pounces down and a food that drops to the floor. This is the second transition where food hits the floor. A transition, the transition this time very, very heavy as we enter straight into the battlefield. So again, contrasts. We go from a nice, quite calm, peaceful moment of them having food. It feels great. Then there's suddenly the violent reality, the bloodshed. And we can see that there's blood. Dr drones don't bleed. Drones, drones, in a sense, are supposed to be AI. They don't bleed. One of our group ends up being shot down and we see Shin being merciful granting him a quick death. The scene is very, very poignant compared to simply seeing the word destroyed on a computer screen. This is the real side of it. This is the emotion. This is the actual human side, the value that Lena isn't seeing. She kind of thinks they're human and she is correct. Something is definitely giving her that gut feeling that there's more going on, but the rest of the world doesn't see the human cost. The death of a comrade and we see Shin removing the insignia from his plane or his bot from his mech to simply remember him by showing us that he is in touch with his human side. The red sunset and we start to get our motif playing on the piano. It's a beautiful moment. It's a very poignant moment. Show that somebody has lost their life, showing the bloodshed. We see on a board that there are 129 days till the end. We hear that there's two years left to the end of the war on Lena's side, but 129 days doesn't make two years so perhaps they, they serve terms perhaps they retire or something at the end how many people are actually going to live to the end of those two years we then get a crossover of our two coins as Lena introduces herself to the squad and the two sides start to overlap Lena's pig caricature is created showing that again to these guys she is nothing more than someone they're going to try and remove via the fact that she maybe they'll drive her to suicide, maybe they'll drive, drive her to just quit. Shin very politely introduces himself as the Reaper. Really, really love it to pieces. I like it. It is great. Talking about the ED, 
showing us the contrasts for the two worlds. Shin's lovely, cosy world, which again, maybe feels a bit old-fashioned, maybe doesn't feel quite up to the standards of Lena's world, but it feels cosy, it feels welcoming. There, there seems to be a heart within Shin's world. And then we get the cold military world of Lena. We get some battle footage showing us the world map, which actually looks like Europe, to suggest that this is supposed to be playing out in a world similar to our own, but just in the future. And it's great because I actually wanted to see the world. And it gives me an idea that perhaps these districts are ex countries. So we're so far in the future now. Countries don't exist, they're simply districts. One of these districts is being seen as nothing more than animals. Their lives are lowly. So it's going to be interesting to see what led to that and what certain district that is and why. The contrast is great. We see the colour palettes once more, seeing that cold, controlling blue of Lena's district and the warm reds showing us the dangers of the 86, but again, the fact that it is warm, it's comfort, it's, it's loving at the same time, because these comrades clearly care for one another. We end on soldiers walking on a bed of red flowers. Red flowers, perhaps them walking through the sea of the fallen, the blood of the fallen being symbolised, the danger of what they're doing. And we get to see the Japanese spider lily dying and wilting. This flower often enough goes into memes. People see this flower as the evil flower. Whenever you see it, generally something bad's gonna happen. Someone's gonna die. There's negative connotations. Similar to Rust in Peace, the Promised Neverland, horrifically murdered by your season two. But again, the power of seeing a red flower, that danger. Perhaps there's some foreshadowing. I see We see some very quick motions, perhaps Shin seems to be strangling someone, but he also seems to be hiding a gun. Are they going to meet at some point? Is their meeting going to be very bad? Are they going to try and kill one another? Who knows? So to make it a very quick outro, because I am suffering and my voice hurts, but I still really wanted to talk about this anime because it's fantastic. It's a very interesting way to show up and set up our world. Set up the fact that we have got two different worlds going on and one world looks down on the other. Very interesting as well that we actually open on the Lena's side. It works better for the twist that comes a bit later on if we are just introduced to the idea that these are drones, there were no casualties, and then you get that twist that actually, yes, these are people. These people bleed, these people have lives, these people care for one another. So that twist comes at the end, which really, really works quite nicely. And I'm very excited to see what the story is, why the rift between these two, why... Why these people are looked down on, looked down as a sub-human race, not even human to Lena's people. So it's going to be interesting to discuss these political boundaries going on. Very interesting to see the fight style. We have these mechs in fights and interesting to find out who are the Legion. So who are they fighting against? What are we fighting for? It does seem that these guys only have two years left to fight and the world is going to be rid. But that could also be bad for the 86 who are not even seen as people. So going to be interesting to see more. I am very excited that this anime is airing and I get to break it down with you guys. Just sucks that it's bad timing with me actually falling sick. Hopefully I get better soon and I can go back to being a bit more lively and sounding not like I'm swallowing fluff or something. I feel like I sound stuffy and that's probably what it is. Very excited, cannot wait to see where the story goes. I've got a lot of questions starting to build and I absolutely adore the way that we were given nuggets at a time. The story was slowly given to us. The picture is slowly building up and by the end, you've got a clear picture of what's going on, the divide amongst the two. Very excited and thank you guys so much. Hopefully you guys are supportive of not too harsh on the fact that I sound awful. So thank you guys. I look forward to seeing you next week for these breakdowns. You have VV episode 3 going out later in the day tomorrow. And then you've got a release later on at night to your eternity airing tomorrow. Really can't wait to get my hands on that. So make sure you guys are taking care, staying safe. Don't do what Becca's done and get yourself sick. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.